One of the leading figures in Thailand's pro-democracy protests has been sentenced to four years in jail after being convicted of insulting the royal family. Human rights lawyer Arna Nampa denies any wrongdoing. The charges were brought over a speech he made during the demonstrations of 2020 when he called for reforms to the monarchy. A short while ago, we spoke to our Southeast Asia correspondent Jonathan Head, who is in Bangkok. I think it's very important because Anon Nampa was the very first activist to come out in public in, in, in a demonstration at the heart of Bangkok and say, you know, lots of you young people want change. At that stage, the protests were against a military-backed government and against various kind of human rights abuses. He said, we can't have change unless we talk about the monarchy. Now, the monarchy in Thailand is a taboo subject. The monarchy is revered. It's held to be above politics. It's held to be officially a ceremonial monarchy. But in reality, everyone knows it's got enormous power, enormous wealth. And he said, nothing's going to change in Thailand unless we bring the monarchy monarchy into the discussion. And following that, that groundbreaking statement he made, we had months and months of increasingly bold protests here on the streets of Thailand. Young people, thousands of them, saying things that had never been said in public before, saying the king should be accountable, we should know how much money he's got, he should be like a European monarch. Th those protests petered out and Anon is among 257 people who've been charged under this draconian law, the famous Les Majesty law. He's got 13 other charges apart from the one he was convicted for today. So he could be spending many, many years in jail. But the conversation did change as a result. We had an election campaign this year in Thailand when the party that won, a young reformist party called Move Forward, also ran on a ticket of sweeping change and said we need a conversation about the monarchy and we need this draconian law to be cut back, to be amended. Now, because of that, they were blocked from taking power. Thailand's constitution allowed the unelected Senate to do that, move forward and now in opposition, and nobody thinks there's going to be any discussion of either the monarchy or the law. And I think Anon Nampa's conviction today is probably, probably going to be one of many that we see. But we do know that attitudes have changed in Thailand, that the millions of people who voted for move forward in the election clearly want change, and it's likely they'll push for it again, including at some point a revived call for the, uh, a discussion of the monarchy, exactly as Anand Nampa insisted should happen three years ago. Jonathan, you said that on the face of it, the monarchy is fairly absent in the running of the country. So why is there such a fraught discussion about it? It's because it's so opaque and it's because the monarchy does have real power. Remember, the king commands personally the top troops, uh, army units, the ones in Bangkok. The monarchy is the wealthiest institution in the country by far. Uh, and it, it, we've seen decisions made in the past where when the king wants something, it's just done. The constitution was amended because the king wanted it. People who want change in Thailand think that the very conservative order here with the military near the top ultimately has the monarchy at the very top of this. And even if the monarchy is not seen to have any influence day to day, that that influence is there. They want it to be uh, to be opened up so that people actually know what the monarchy's powers are, how that power's being used, and crucially, how much money it has and where it's coming from. That's the discussion they want. That's the discussion that they're not allowed to have at this stage. Jonathan Head there.